Committee and House Deputy Leader Peter Akpatasen says the committee intends to also look into diversion of crude oil and pipeline vandalism. Allegations that crude oil is being stolen on an industrial scale and proceeds laundered through World Financial Centers prompted the House of Representatives to set up the ad hoc committee. We need to know the players, the people who are this fund that is for Nigerian people. Some individuals are richer than the country and I can tell you that for free. And this, who are these people? There are people who are shortchanging the system. It's also a known fact that Nigerian funds they budget about 90% from the revenue accruable from oil proceeds. And if we do not take up this uh, task to find a lasting solution, to put an end to crude oil theft in the country, there will come a time we would have to do more borrowing to fund our national budget. The committee has six weeks to conclude the assignment. In another development, the House Committee on Insurance has interacted with management of the National Insurance Commission towards improving the sector. There is no law that is uh, cast on steel that it will remain like that over time. Because of the dynamism in the society, we keep ch making some changes. And I know quite well that uh, certain flowers, like he mentioned in the insurance industry, has made it uh, impossible for the enforcement to take the uh, very deep reach. We also believe that due to inadequate capitalization, some of the companies are not able to meet their obligations as and when due. This is one of the things that prompted our having to increase the capital, in addition to increasing the local retention. The need to amend laws on insurance were highlighted at the meeting from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Let's take you to the Red Chambers now. The National Assembly is to pass the Petroleum Industry Bill next year. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, was speaking at an interactive session involving the Senate, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, NNPC, and other actors in the oil industry. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Onko reports that the meeting was basically to get more inputs on the Petroleum Sharing Contract Amendment Bill. Interaction is sequel to the second passage of the bill that seeks to amend the Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Production Sharing Contract Act, which regulates the sharing of additional revenue between the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and the various production sharing contract oil companies. The Senate, in a bid to ensure that Nigeria is not shortchanged in the sharing arrangement, embarked on the amendment of that act. And this meeting convened by the Senate committees on petroleum upstream, gas, Finance and judiciary is to reassure investors, especially international oil companies, that the benefits of the amendment will be mutual. We know we have other countries who have this product, and therefore we have to be competitive. We have to have an environment where the businesses make profit. This is a journey that involves everyone. We want both government, and that includes the legislature and the directive on one hand, and the IOC is to work together to ensure that this environment we are trying to create is an environment that will work for all of us. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Perez Silva, observed that the amendment will significantly improve Nigeria's oil reserve. Uh, this has been uh, a law that has been long-standing, and you know that uh, there has been not been too much investment in the oil industry for a while because the regulatory environment has not been very clear. Uh, so it's very important as a country for us to clarify the regulatory environment by amending the law so that all operators in the industry will know exactly what to expect when they come. Shell Petroleum, Mobile Production, Chevron and Total were among the international oil companies at the dialogue from the National Assembly, Ignatius Unquo, NT News.
In another development, President of South Sudan has commended President Muhammad Buhari for Nigeria's continued leadership towards governizing African oil producers to stabilize the global oil market for the benefit of the continent. A statement by the Acting Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs Division of the NNPC, Samson Makoji, says the President gave the commendation when, the, when he received Nigeria's Minister of State Petroleum Resources, Timi Prey Silva in Juba, South Sudan. I have sent a message to his brother, General Salva Kirmayadid, on issues related to oil sector, and particularly in Africa, and as he said, issues that are related to OPEC and to OPO, and also the invitation of our Minister of Petroleum to participate in an upcoming conference that will be held in Abuja. Meanwhile, the federal government is rallying African oil producers in a move to ensure that the continent benefits maximally from hydrocarbon deposits locked in its shelves. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timi Prey Silva, traversed Angola, Gabon and South Sudan over the weekend. Silva, who doubles as president of the African Petroleum Resources Organization, Producers Organization, toured the African oil producing nations, which are also signatories to the organization of petroleum exporting countries declaration of cooperation discussions dwelt on compliance agreement by member nations ahead of the joint ministerial meeting committee of OPEC and non OPEC countries in Vienna Austria in December in another development the Minister of State for petroleum has inaugurated operation white an initiative to guarantee energy security in the country even as the federal government inaugurated a team of 89 persons drawn from five key agencies to ensure transparency, accountability, and the distribution of petroleum products across the country. Members of the team were drawn from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Department of Petroleum Resources, Petroleum Products Price and Regulatory Agency, Petroleum Equalization Fund, as well as the Department of State Security Service. And now to education, High Premium is placed on initiatives and intervention towards harnessing the benefits of ICT in education to further strengthen the drive to actualize the objective of education ministry in aligning with the dynamics of 21st century teaching, learning and administration. The Minister of State Education, Chukwe Meka Umajoba, disclosed this at the inauguration and training of staff of the Ministry on Cybersecurity in Abuja. It is a venture that is aimed at connecting teachers and students with their counterparts worldwide for collaboration, knowledge sharing and aspiration. driver of sustainable development and global competitiveness in our world today. Our target is to build the capacity of staff with local and internationally recognized certifications, which invariably will enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of their service delivery. The program will reinforce the federal government's next level agenda of improving the quality of education delivery and entrenching digital literacy in the country. And from education, we move to infrastructure, blasting of rocks, augmentation of old alignment, illegal mining and construction of residential buildings along the bypass corridor were the major impediments responsible for the delay in the completion of Oyo Ogbomosho 43 kilometers road. These were the observations during an on-the-spot assessment tour of Section 2 of Ibadan Ilorin Highway awarded in 2010. Adekunle Adebayo reports. Three kilometers out of one or two from Ibadan to Ilori has witnessed some appreciable level of completion. The assessment trial of the old and new alignment of the dualization revealed that 21.8 kilometers of asphaltic binder has been accomplished. Done a lot of sieve setting in mattress as it were. You can see over there some sieving you know, system put in place to enable us build a strong pavement for this section of the road. Work is in progress on the interchange, five bridges, waterfall from uphill ecosystem, massive surface rock, and fixing a four trouble spot on the old Ojo road. Has sufficient resources and expertise to deliver the road uh, complete, uh, completed at the shortest time. By the end of 2020, stroke early 2021, it should be completed. The tour 
took the director of Southwest Federal Highways to the palace of Sol of Mumosho to explain reasons for the delay. Meanwhile, the road is being provided with subsoil and wood drains in nine water zones. In Ibadan, Adekunle Adebayo, NTA News. And talking security now, the Air Tax Force of Operation Lafayette Dole has decimated a location at Boboche on the fringes of the Sambisa Forest in Borno State, being used by Boko Haram terrorists as a meeting venue. In a statement signed by the Director of Public Relations Information, Nigerian Air Force Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola says the attack was conducted on 13 October 2019, following successive days of intelligence, surveillance, and recovery cognizance missions coupled with human intelligence reports that established that a building within the settlement was being used as a rendezvous by the Boko Haram terrorists where their commanders assemble to take instructions before launching attacks against own troops and innocent civilians. Accordingly, the air tax force detailed its fighter aircraft to attack the hideouts, scoring accurate hits within the designated area leading to the decimation of the target structure. Several Boko Haram terrorists were also killed as a result of the strikes. The NAF operating in concert with surface forces will sustain its efforts to completely destroy all remnants of the terrorists in the northeast. And in Ogun State, the federal government has restated commitment to ensure adequate protection of lives and property of Nigerians, especially those living within and around border towns. The Minister of Interior, Raouf Aregbeshola, who gave the assurance while inaugurating an operation base for men and officers for Nigerian Immigration Service, Ogun State Command, said security remains top priority of the federal government. The partial closure of Nigeria's borders with neighboring countries by the federal government is a deliberate attempt to curtail illegal activities such as smuggling and transborder crime. Revenue from duties alone, custom duties alone, was almost quadrupled what we had ever had. Why? Because with the deal that is now enforced or taking place at the border border, not enter our country without effective payment of the right duty. We expect our law enforcement agencies to carry out their duties as a shrine the constitution. We must also join hands with them and encourage them to do so without allowing them. For the Controller General of Immigration, the commissioning of the state of the art facility will help motivate officers to do more. Trade of legal items. You cannot trade on arms. You cannot trade on the rights we just want. You cannot trade on drugs that will kill our people. The dignitaries thereafter embark on facility tour of the operations base. In other news, the All Progressives Congress has condemned the attack on the party's national chairman, Comrade Adams Oshomale, at his Benin residence by alleged political thugs. National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Lanre Isa Onilu, in a statement said the party's national chairman has rightly called for calm after the apparent attempt, attempt on his life and called on the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, and other relevant security outfits to investigate the ugly incident and prosecute the sponsors and attackers. In Edo State, just as in any other state, everyone must be free to go about their normal and legitimate activities without harassment, intimidation, threats to life and property. The statement note. It further adds that it is clear that the sponsors of the attack are bent on causing crisis in the state in pursuit of their desperate and unpopular political interest. Human life, he added, is greater than anyone's political ambition. All right, let's take a pause from this end as we join Dotun Ogunyami in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Dotun. Thank you, Ruth, and welcome to Lagos. Schneider Electric, a global specialist in energy management and automation, has emphasized on the role of strategic the strategic role, rather, of innovations in the transformation of the power sector. This was the consensus of stakeholders at the 2019 Innovation Day, organized by the company Lagos. Lin Lineke reports. 
The world is changing at an unprecedented pace, driven by the new digital economy. It is fast becoming a world where artificial intelligence and digitization are enabling companies to operate more efficiently without disruption. We are supplying energy and automation digital solution through an integrated solutions architecture that we call uh, ecostructure. Schneider, the global energy giant, is championing groundbreaking solutions that will ensure sustainable socio-economic development. So what we bring to the equation first is um, a platform that allows to bring in solar, wind, biomass, fuel, um, storage, grid, gas, even uh, diesel. So bringing all of this together and ensuring continuity of service to the end user because these are different sources of energy that behave in different ways. Innovation Day Lagos Summit, among other things, focuses on turning buildings into generation assets with local renewables that limit carbon footprints and develop smart demand side management. We are able to be ready for this mass migration. We're able to use our buildings more efficiently on electricity, on water, on even safety, because the more people in a building, the more we need to be careful about safety and, and this we're able to do using this technology. The event featured the unveiling of Schneider's Innovation Hub and the launch of its latest offers. Awards were also presented to two universities for several innovations in energy solutions. For 40 years, Schneider Electric, a French multinational corporation, has been providing innovative energy solutions across Africa. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. There is a renewed clamor for more women to be more active in politics to support the vision of having more of them at the helm of running government affairs. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals at Dejoke Urilokwe Adefulire gave the advice at the 2019 Arise Work for Life in Lagos. Diana Ajale reports. <laughs> kilometer walk, which is the 11th edition, took participants round major streets of Victoria Island in Lagos, with the aim of encouraging women to step up in all relevant areas to enable them become more impactful in the society. To ignite women, action in women, to be able to take responsibility of what God has given us to do. And it's a message to this nation that as we face our challenges head on, Work for Life hashtag Bloom attracted men and women from all walks of life in Lagos. Diana Ajale, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos nationwide continues after the break. Do stay with us. Honorable Minister of Information and Culture Al Haji Lai Mohammed cordially invites members of the general public to a special town hall meeting on security date. Tuesday, 15th October 2019, time 10 a.m. Venue, Katsina State Local Government Commission Conference Room, Kaita Road, opposite State House of Assembly, Katsina State. Deaconess Grace Isu Gekwe, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, announcer. Let's come together as we celebrate the uniqueness of our cultural diversity, showcase our creativity and ingenuity. It's the National Festival for Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, in the Asian city of Benin, Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation. Theme, our royalty, our pride. Holding 19th through 26th October 2019. Highlights will include drama, children poetry performance, essay writing competition, crafts competition, indigenous cuisine, traditional wrestling, indigenous fabrics in royal apparel, cultural quiz competition, board games, and lots more. Oh yes, it's the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, Edo State, Nigeria. Holding 19th. 2019. We are celebrating our heritage. October 
Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Anabusa. Film editing and television production techniques are wonders of the tube that you get with continuous training and retraining. NTA Television College Joss therefore invites film editors and producers in public and private television stations to a special four-week intensive course on film editing and basic television production. Date. 14th October to 8th November 2019. Course fee 100,000 naira per participant. Accommodation inclusive. Venue NTA TV College Rayfield Jaws. Take advantage of the course to upgrade your professional skills in film editing and television production. For inquiries, please call 0803 314 4383 or 0806 980 9807. NTA TV College Jaws. Training you to be the best you want to be. The ancestors were taken away as slaves. Now they return as kings and queens on a pilgrimage back to the motherland. The third door of return ceremony, Diaspora Festival, Badagri, Lagos, Nigeria, takes place in Badagri from the 15th to the 20th of October 2019. <laughs> For details on participation and sponsorship, contact the following. Website adore.ng The African Door of Return Experience. Don't miss it. Brought to you by the African Door of Return Experience Initiative in collaboration with the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission and the African Renaissance Foundation. Chief host, the Lagos State Government. The new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively taking a look at the traditional television and new media. Are they comparable or complementary? Media industry players give perspective on the trends, progress, challenges and the way forward. Find out on this compelling edition of TV Guide. Expository interviews with stars of the team within our space. Becky Madajemo of NTA, Utibe Umore of AIT, Nifemi Ogutai of TVC and a host of other TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also feature Ya Modina. I'm the CEO Managing Director of Ya Modina Sister Restaurant. I choose to serve further to your house. Let me finish. Welcome to Ya Modina Sister Restaurant. A TV drama series on NTA. Let's get to meet the characters behind Iyama Dina. This edition also presents exciting features on tourism, culture, entertainment, sports, health and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendors near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. We're glad to know you're there. Now, expectations regarding Nigeria-Pakistan military relations are quite high. With the visit of the Pakistani Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal Mujahid Anwar Khan, to his Nigerian counterpart at the headquarters, Nigerian Air Force, correspondent Naja Atutijani reports. Pakistan bilateral relations span five decades, notably in the area of trade and military interventions such as the supply of defense equipment and the training of personnel. And this visit of the Pakistani air chief is expected to add value in these areas. This is what we look forward to, that we cooperate with our Nigerian brothers and sisters so that that aircraft comes uh, for the defense of the Nigeria. We are so many of our officers uh, right now training him, uh, you know, with the Pakistani Air Force and I think that partnership will ultimately impact positively on what we are doing in Nigeria. Military relations between these two air powers has seen support in the form of upgrading of the Nigerian air fleet with several PAC Super Mashak training aircraft as well as JF-17 Thunder Combat Aircraft, their landmark agreement in 2018, where Pakistan gave a sovereign guarantee of $183.4 million to enable the Nigerian Air Force acquire three of the Thundercrafts assembled in Pakistan. 
Nigeria and Pakistan share similar security challenges, and Air Chief Marshal Mujahid has given reassurance of his country's commitment to fighting insurgency and extremism via air power support and capacity building. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. Let's shift our attention from security. The model of the ECOWAS Early Warning and Response Network, codename ECO-1, has been evaluated 11 years into its operations. Haman Jabani reports that the outcome is to improve the system, which has been judged as one of the successful early warning mechanisms on the African continent. The early warning system was established in 2008 for conflict prevention, management, resolution, peacekeeping and security in the region and to enhance proximity policing and early response at local and international levels. The ministerial meeting is aimed at presenting the ECOWAS data model for the creation of awareness of ECO-1 system, access to ECO-1 data collection and validation, model strength and how to improve the existing system as well as review the entire system. This holds true because an effective conflict prevention and management tool resulting from this evaluation exercise would be one of the best assets and tools a regional economic community like the ECOWAS Commission can have at its disposal to protect its member states and population from threats both external and internal. We have reached a level where we are deploying early warning at the national level with the creation of what we call the National Early Warning and Response Centers. This workshop really provides us with a fantastic opportunity and platform for knowledge exchange about how we can do all of this better. The outcome of the meeting will help in addressing major risks, threats and challenges that include intercommunal conflict, violence associated with transhumans, flooding, food insecurity affecting member states. ECHO-1 is geared towards predicting conflict outcome that translate to peace negotiation and prevention strategies in the region. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. In other news, Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mohamed Musa Bello, his administration's determination to provide affordable housing for workers in the territory. The minister made the pledge during an inspection tour of the ongoing NLC TUC mass housing estate at the Apo, at Apo Abuja Shuaibo Onoze Yakubu tells us more. And is to provide at least 5,000 affordable housing units for Nigerian workers in the FCT. So I, I came in FCT Minister morning. Mohammed Musa uh, Bill emphasized that there is the need to revisit the terms of agreement for the project in order to address the issue of funding created by the exit of the Shop P initiative, which was supposed to fund the project. Substantial work has been done. Uh, we came on ground and saw the, the challenges. But I'm very confident that the challenges will be surmounted. Amen. Amen. So this is a very important project, not only to the NLC, but also to the government of President Mohamed Buhari. This is a demonstration of commitment. And uh, I can say that Nigerian workers that have subscribed to this project, if they see this today, they will be extremely happy. The ongoing project consists of 3,600 housing units of different types and at various stages of completion. The proposed 10-lane expressway will pass through the civil service estate at Apu, Shwaibu, News. The menace of sexual harassment in tertiary institutions may linger unless culprits are exposed by the authorities and made to face the consequences of their misconduct. Guests on NTS Good Morning Nigeria, who made this advocacy, also emphasized the need for strict academic protocols on student lecturer relations as well as whistleblowing mechanisms to encourage victims to speak up. Patricia Esami Luba will tell us more. Established by the guests that cases of harassment of female students by Randy lecturers are grossly underreported because victims lack confidence and are usually afraid to speak. On our campuses, we have helplines. I think what we should begin to emphasize is the need for victims to be courageous enough to make reports. While the Nigerian Senate 
is already considering a bill which aims at preventing sexual harassment of university students. The guest urged university authorities to break the monopoly of lecturers in grading students so they do not solely decide the fate of their students. Make it impossible for a lecturer to determine in a particular subject the fate of a student completely. Uh, the autonomy in the system uh, uh, gives it uh, another coloration. Protection of victims was canvassed as necessary to build up the confidence of more victims to report such misconduct. We must put victim protection at the fore when we're discussing these things. Whether it is sex for grades or sex for employment, we must begin to talk about protecting the victim. One-on-one -on -one meetings with lecturers and students should be abolished. Either you go through your staff academic advisor or the dean of student affairs. I encourage institutions of learning to appreciate modern technology. I recommend they should install a closed circuit uh, television, that is CCTV, in lecturers' offices. While it was emphasized that not everyone in the academia indulged in sexual harassment, the guests were unanimous that discipline should be entrenched in the nation's tertiary institutions to check cases of indecent exposure and other excesses of both students and the lecturers. In Abuja, Patricia A. Semiluba, NTA News. And still talking education, the federal government has suspended the Ibadan Examination Center in Oyo State for unruly behavior by candidates at the center. Now, this is one out of the 47 computer-based test centers participating in the 2019 October Die Teachers Professional Qualifying Examination Nationwide. Online Kaujo reports. To ensure quality education, both in teaching and learning in schools, that the Teachers Professional Qualifying Examination, which started in 2016, is being organized for teachers. From January of next year, if you are not a qualified teacher, you will have no place in our classrooms. Due to the expected sanction, more than 69,000 teachers are participating in the October Diet of the Teachers Professional Qualifying Examination across the country. Gibson Akos, an NCE holder who has been teaching fine and applied arts at UBE Arabic School in Kaduna State in the last two years, described the examination as a way of addressing the state of emergency declared on the education sector. Most of the questions are not dark from English and mathematics, which uh, I'm not like, English is not my, uh, math is not my field, but I just have to like, cope with the mass. While most centers across the country had seamless exercise, the Ibadan Center had to be suspended for unruly conduct. With less than 90 days to the implementation, the council said another examination will be conducted before the end of the year. Online Kaujo, NTA News. And from education to issues on drug abuse, the federal government's effort at reading the country off illicit drugs and drug abuse has received a boost as the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Cairo Area Command, engaged all stakeholders on a sensitization campaign held in Cairo, Nasarawa State. Blessing Demfulani has more. Is an excessive consumption of narcotics or drugs, which consequently leads to social vices and even psychosis. This necessitated the campaign with the aim of conscientizing youths, students, religious bodies, as well as critical stakeholders towards taming the tide of the menace. And you are aware that this um, local government uh, has the highest rate of drug consumption and trafficking, of course, in Nasarawa State. That is why with the area commander and the local government chairman has to give a very, very big importance to this sensitization. I to assure NDA that we will continue to, in our own little way, to partner NDA to ensure a sustained campaign. Participants at the program say the campaign is timely. If we don't checkmate it now, the effect it will cause on the society on the long run will even be more than the so-called Boko Haram. Drug abuse is a dangerous aspect to our society. As part of the campaign, there was a road work and roving around Karu local government area to enlighten the public. A drug-free society is a crime-free society. Say no to drug abuse. From Karu local government area, 
blessing na fulani NTA news I'm from Nasarawa. Let's take you to Enugu, where Chinenye Nguye is standing by with more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Chinenye. Hello, Ruth, and welcome to Enugu. To consolidate security in Enugu State, the government has procured 18 automated drones for effective security monitoring and also approved the construction of three pedestrian bridges in some strategic locations in Enugu Metropolis to safeguard the lives of road users. These and other approvals of the State Executive Council were announced to journalists by the State Commissioner for Information, Maya Luguchi Diaro, at the end of their maiden meeting after the inauguration of the ESCO. Susan Eze has details. The new executive council in their maiden meeting reviewed the approvals of the previous exco. The executive council, according to the commissioner, is consolidating on the security measures already on ground. The already procured security vehicles, he said, are being fitted with necessary modern gadgets, while the approved 260 motorcycles have also been procured. Mr. Allo also announced that government has also procured 18 automated drones for effective security monitoring of all forests in Enugu State. We know that the latest technology in investigative te uh, security is the use of drones. So we can now proudly count the Enugu State that the Enugu State is now in the direction of running drones. And we already purchased 18 and this will be deployed as soon as the security agencies finish with the processing of the installation of the, uh, the drones. Other approvals include the provision of waiver of 52.2 million naira agreeable land charges for the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, to support the commission in establishing an information communication pack in Enugu based on the immense benefits from such a venture in Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And Governor Ifanyu Gwanyo of Enugu State has been commended for engendering policies that have created an enabling environment for business to thrive in the state. Again, Susan Eze reports that a delegation of some operators of the private sector gave this commendation during a courtesy visit to the Governor at the Government House, Enugu. Mr. Bell was impressed by the rehabilitation work on the network of roads within and around the host community of the brewery in Enugu State. He was particularly grateful to Governor Ogwani for the way he addressed the civil unrest by the communities around the business operating area. Um, I would like to say that this is this enabling environment that you've created. Um, has allowed us as Nigerian breweries also to pursue our business and not only that, we've been able to uh, today uh, uh, start a procedure uh, for an expansion of our brewery that we wanted to announce you. The state government's efforts at improving the business environment ended the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council Award in April this year. Governor Ugwani assured the group of his administration's unflinching support. As a government, we understand the import of such expansion from employment generation and wealth creation to improve tax revenue. Our administration has done a lot to make it a destination of choice for credible investors. Enugu State had in a 2018 World Bank Ease of Doing Business ranking transited from 27th out of 36 states and Abuja to the third position in the Ease of Doing Business in Nigeria. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And that is it from Enugu. It continues with Ruth in Abuja after this commercial break. Do stay with us. Belkuta is 40. Come, let's celebrate 40 years of impressive TV broadcasting at the grassroots. On Thursday, 17th October 2019, there'll be a lecture titled Lens and Sound Television, a tool for social reorientation and good governance. 
guest lecturer, Professor Oluyemisi Oluremi Obiladi, Professor of Education and Women's Studies, Obafemi Awolo University. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, Prince Dakpo Abiyodun, Governor of Ogun State. Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty, Oba Adedo Tunare Mubadebo, the Alake and Pramontrola of Egbaland. Chairman of the occasion, Chief Olatunde Anyela Budu, Mayego of Egbaland. Chief host, Malam Yakubo Ibn Mohammed, Director General, NCA. Other activities lined up for the occasion include an array of awards to distinguished entities held to work on Saturday, 12 October 2019, while a novelty match comes up on Tuesday, 15 October 2019 at MKO Abiola Stadium. Come, celebrate 40 years of impressive television at the grassroots with us and take NCA Abelko to the next level. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please, did you hear that? Uh, of course I did. That is village El Basta tune. Eh? So, Auntie Amebo was not gossiping then? Village El Basta is celebrating 50 years. 50? Already? Wait, oh, you mean people have been watching Village El Basta since 1968? Okay, how time flies. Tired, but not tired. And after 50 years now. So because of that, we won't get big party. New date, now 28th to 29th, October 2019. And me, I'm a body invite you now. I'm a belly just the sweet. Because I don't say all those people, they drink my party. Then go, come, come drink it away again. And me, radio a jam, you call you now. You could not forget it. Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, uh, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. To the glory of God, we celebrate the life of our beloved matriarch. Mother, grandmother, sister, auntie, and wife, Madame Evumena Rosaline Efeludu, aged 84 years. Burial arrangement, Thursday, 17th October 2019. Service of songs, time 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, 22 Okere Road, Wari Delta State. Friday, 18th October, commendation service at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, time 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Interment at a residence in Odo Zeho Town before Delta Glass Company. Time 12 noon. In-laws visit at a residence. Time 12 noon to 1 p.m. Guest entertainment at Odo Zeho Town Primary School Field. Time 1 p.m. Sunday 20th October 2019. Outing service at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, Okere Road, Wari Delta State. Time 9 a.m. RSVP Pastor Ray Efe Yubavre 0802-30 023729 Family Announcer Thanks for staying tuned. The internally displaced persons of Bakasi in Cross River State are appealing to the federal government to sign the sovereign guarantee of the Bakasi Deep Sea Port to make the project a reality. Paul Abel reports that the people who are majorly businessmen and seafood are of the view that when the Deep Sea Port becomes operational, it will boost socio-economic activities in the area and impact their lives positively. The handover of the oil reached Bakasi Peninsula to Cameroon on 14th August 2008 and the hostile treatment of Nigerians by Cameroonian authorities there. The people of Bakasi in Cross River State left their ancestral land to settle here in this government primary and secondary schools in Apabuyu local government area, now Bakasi local government area as IDPs since 2013. 
Despite assistance by government agencies, the living condition of these IDPs is quite worrisome as they are of their need to reverse the deplorable situation. The people here have a firm belief that the eventual take-off of the Bakasi Deep Sea Port will improve their forms of livelihood and impact greatly on the economy of the state and the country. The federal government should also ex uh, assist His Excellency and approve the Deep Sea Port uh, project where the youth of the Bakasi will be a right beneficial of the place. Making for the federal government also. Let him allow the seaport. The federal government will go. The addition of the onion. Say the onion will come in the middle. But the onion will not come in. The state government further reiterates benefits of the deep sea port. The Bakasi Deep Sea Port project, which started in 2015, has undergone all required processes and has been given appropriate approvals by the federal government. The project needs the presidential signature of a sovereign guarantee to make it a reality. In Calabar, Paul Abel, and here News. And to religious martyrs now, the relationship between God and man can be more strengthened through prayers and the reading of books encompassing God's mystery of miracles. This was the aim of the launching of four books by Pastor Balogun, which all preaches the wonders of God and how man can maintain a cordial relationship with their creator. Mohammed Ali Uba has the details. Books launched and unveiled are the Obed Edom testimony, destroying ancient altars, understanding kingdom secrets, and the mighty God. All the books are coated with spiritual words and moral lessons on how man can establish and maintain strong relationship with God. The chairman of the launching and chief unveiler, Olushegun Ronshewe, called the books the light and emphasized that they are all mankind needs to live a healthy relationship with God. This book, I can tell you, is a cultural connection to divine prosperity, which we have left for some time. So I congratulate the pastor for these four books. I believe the four books will stand out. The wife of the author, Pastor Mrs. Olukemi Balogun, is one of the book's reviewers. Behind every successful man is a woman. More importantly, I think there is a, a God behind the successful man. It's just um, a tip of what Pastor Peter is all about. And for us to live effective and fruitful Christian lives, it's important for us to read books. The author of the four books, Pastor Peter Balogo, expressed his profound gratitude to God Almighty for seeing him through. According as God moves the heart to write. The Spirit of God impressed these books strongly in my spirit for the now, and then I went into a hibernation, waiting upon the Lord. The four books are available at all leading stores at affordable prices. Mohamed Aliuba, NTA News. And still on religious matters, the National Board for Arabic and Islamic Studies says it is recording a steady increase in student enrollment for the Senior Arabic and Islamic Studies Certificate and Tafiz, Tafiz examinations. Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachakun reports that Registrar of the Board, Professor Shafiu Abdullahi, stated this while announcing the result of the 2019 examination. National Board for Arabic and Islamic Studies, established in 1952 under the Northern Regional Government, has grown from training institute for teachers of Arabic and Islamic studies to the status of examination body. In 2019, 36,000 candidates sat for senior Arabic and Islamic secondary school certificate examination and tafis, out of which 29,875 representing 80% of the total number of candidates passed with five credits and above, including mathematics, English language, and other science-related subjects. The, the objective of uh, establishing these institutions, I mean Arabic and Islamic institutions, is to have integrated syllables, which we have it, and the one we are using. Professor Shapiro Abdullahi also said Imbais will integrate most Angaya schools into its operations and enhance collaboration with all institutions of higher learning with a view to making its certificate recognized by all institutions. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachkun, NTA News. 
Women are gatekeepers and must be alive to their responsibilities on all fronts for society to be free from all forms of corruption. Now, this is the valedictory message of the Primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion and Most Reverend Nicholas Oko to the annual women's conference. Victor Azu will tell us more. It's the annual women's conference of the Anglican Church in Abuja, an occasion that also avails women an opportunity to evaluate their spiritual journey in the last one year. Being the last outing on this front for outgoing primates of the church, Nicholas Uko, and his wife, Nkasi Obi, their remarks expectedly were laced with words of wisdom to guide the women into the future. President of the women's organizations and wife of the primate, Nkasi Obi Oko, tasks the women to pay attention to the home front, particularly in the upbringing of their children, given the rising cases of child molestation and sexual harassment. It is the duty of women to be mindful of their children right from conception to birth. They have to know what the children do. They have to make sure that they are friends to their children. The primate on his part wants the women to perfect their role of being a link between family and society for the good of all. They are very important to the home and the home is very important to the society. So they should make sure that children are well brought up, they have good behavior to present to society. This is the 20th Anglican Women's Conference in Abuja and the 10th and last for Primate Nicholas Uko in Abuja, Victor Azu NTUs. And talking sports now, in preparatory towards the proposed hosting of the FIFA Under-20 Women World Cup in 2020, Minister of Sports and Lagos State Governor inspect facilities in Lagos. Gifts George has this and more on our sports update. The Minister of Youth and Sports, Sunday Dari, and the Governor of Lagos State, Babajinde Sanwulu, accompanied by sports administrators, inspected the training pitches and other facilities at the National Stadium, the Slim Balogun, and the Onikon Stadium, under construction, meant to be used for the soccer fiesta. They expressed optimism over the readiness of the facilities approved by the FIFA inspection team. Lagos and whatever consortium, you know, comes to bear as the preferred bidder, we will be able to turn everything in that National Stadium into an international Asset. What you see today is the first step towards maintaining what is a national monument. About 165 badminton players from 28 states across the federation featured at the just concluded third mutual benefit badminton championship held at the police college Ikeja Lagos. At the end of the tournament, Okpeyori Anu Oluapo beats Godwin Olufuwa to love the emerge champion in the men's singles finals, while Dokas Adeshekon, emerge women's singles champion, beats Ruth Eberi to love in the final. With that now, we know who our national number one is, number two, number three. Because as you play competitions, you garner points. From Elori, Ahmed Fulani reports that the third edition of Jam Higher Institution Football Competition has commenced in Elori on Sunday with the screen of participating institutions with a view to determine the status of the players as bona fide students and to eliminate mercenaries. If they have been featuring for any professional site, they cannot take part. Eight matches were played at three different centers on Monday at the group stage. With sports updates, Gifts George, NTA News. It was an outpouring.